You're listening to the Fort Erie Podcast, your local source for upcoming events, hot new listings, and bite-sized interviews with business and community leaders. Here's your host, Brent Jones. What's shaking, Fort Erie? Welcome to the Fort Erie Podcast. It's Tuesday, March 17th. I'm your host, Brent Jones, and you're listening to Season 2, Episode 4 of the podcast. Today I'm going to have not one but two guests for you and my first guest will be Connie Sharon, president of the Fort Erie Conservation Club in Stevensville. But just first, are you stocked up on toilet paper, Fort Erie? I sure hope so. It's chaos out there right now. Best thing to do at a time like this is, uh, well, stay at home, rest, relax, and maybe catch up on past episodes of the Fort Erie podcast. Anyway, let's get into what's making news this week in Fort Erie. First story I've got for you, uh, Automotive Warehouse, an auto parts supply business, which many of you may know from its location in Niagara-on-the-Lake, is expanding into Fort Erie this week. The business, uh, which first opened in 1985, now has a location at 224 Garrison Road and is open Mondays through Saturdays. Uh, Next story, council has approved a $65,000 budget to begin repairing the Friendship Trail near Waverly Beach, uh, where, as of course most of you know, it was destroyed last Halloween due to a massive uh, due to massive storm flooding, damages were estimated uh, north of $1 million, and the town has applied for provincial disaster funds, but doesn't expect to receive an answer until sometime this fall. So for more information about any of these stories, be sure to check out the show notes below this episode. Uh, all right, on to my real estate pick of the week. This week's hot new listing is courtesy of Daniel Passero with Remax Niagara Realty, and it's located at 345 Emmerich Avenue in the north end of Fort Erie. This home is listed for just shy of $349, and it's been totally renovated top to bottom. Three bedrooms, two bathrooms, over a thousand square feet. Uh, Check the link in the show notes below for more information about this brand new listing. And uh, now just on to Fort Erie questions of the week, or uh, Fort Erie questions and answers, uh, questions taken directly from the Facebook group by the same name. Now, there are a lot of questions in that group right now pertaining to coronavirus and toilet paper and hand sanitizer, but since that sort of information is changing by the minute, I want to steer clear of those sorts of questions. Uh, So we're going to start with Jane, who says, I would like some suggestions for a paving company to do my driveway. And the most popular response was, uh, well, not for, for paving at all, actually. Most residents who chimed in replied suggesting hiring a company called Next Level Concrete, which you can look up on Facebook. Uh, Elizabeth asks, does anyone know who to call for a security system? There were a few local options brought up in the answers, but the most common response of all was Bell Smart Home, which again, you can look up online. So that about does it for Fort Erie questions and answers. Now on to my interview with Connie Sharon. Welcome back, everybody. I am sitting down with Connie Sharon, president of Fort Erie Conservation Club. Welcome to the show, Connie. Thank you. Glad to be here. Well, thank you for chatting with me. I appreciate that. Um, Let me start first by asking you, what is it that makes Fort Erie and Stevensville included such an awesome place to live and work? It's a very friendly, small community type of situation. Mm -hmm. And um, people... If you walk down the street, somebody will say hi to you, you know? So (laughs) that's always nice. Um, It's just like a little country place. It's like a little village of its own. I agree. Yeah. 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 Well, your club, and we'll talk a lot about the Conservation Club today, of course, but as I understand, was established in 1983. Is that right? Correct. Um, When did you get involved? 1987. Wow. Almost at the beginning. Almost at the beginning, yes. Yeah. Yes. When members... We're only members allowed in here. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't open to the public back was then? Was not open to the public back then. When did that yeah. happen? When it was open to the public? Yeah. Oh, yeah. golly. I got to say the early 90s, maybe? Early 90s. Okay. Yeah. I got you. And for those listening who maybe aren't familiar, uh, can you tell us a bit about what does the Fort Erie Conservation Club do? Okay, I'll try to sum it up as short as I can. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> okay, we have a pond out the side there that mm-hmm. we raise walleye and then we release them in the Grand River. Okay. We have fishing derbies for the kids and that helps to learn them about catch and relief and different fish that mm-hmm. are out there. Mm-hmm. And then we also give 
free trees, little siblings, to the um, community to okay. plant. Um, as they take down trees, I won't go there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we promise not to get too political on That's the show, right. That's right. right. Okay. So uh, we give out free trees that are all native trees. They're not... Um, uh, not supposed to, ones that are not supposed to be here, so they're meant to be here. So we give out free trees. We get about 1,200 trees and we hand them out. So we do that. Okay. We maintain the trails out there so that people are comfortable to walk the trails. And what are the hours if somebody wanted to come say hike a trail? Okay. In, the, in the summertime, it's from eight in the morning till eight at night. Okay. And then in the winter, it's eight in the morning until it gets dark and yeah. then we lock the gate. So we lock the gate just to keep people out from coming in and revving up and <laughs> having a party in the back, you know? Sure, sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, th this this building we're, we're sitting in right now, I mean, this is almost like a like a banquet hall, I guess, right? Or it is. Does this get rented out for events? Yes. We rent it out to weddings, showers, um, private parties, just not stag and does. Not stag and does, okay. Not stag and does, Can't no. get too rowdy when you're at the no, conservation club. No, exactly. Okay. Um, yeah. Well, let's let's do this. Let's uh, we'll, we'll talk a little more about the conservation club, but I also mm -hmm. want to jump into kind of a rapid fire question round. So these are just little trivia questions about you. I'm going to give you a whole series of questions um, and just first answer that comes to mind, go ahead and blurt it out. Uh-oh. Okay, you ready? I'm ready. Okay. <laughs> On a scale of one to ten, how good are you at keeping secrets? Oh, I'm good. I, oh, nine. <laughs> nine? Nine, okay. Uh, do you remember who your first celebrity crush was? Yes, Kurt Russell. Kurt Russell, all right. Do you prefer dawn or dusk? Dusk. Dusk. If you could travel back in time, what period would you go to? Back to the 1950s. Okay. Do you snore? Well, <laughs> they say I do. Yeah, you wouldn't know. You're asleep, right? That's right. Uh, what place have you most wanted to travel to? Well, I've already been there, so yep. my most place was Hawaii. Hawaii, okay. Yeah. What's your favorite junk food? Chocolate bars. Chocolate bars. Favorite childhood TV show? My goodness. I love Lucy. I love Lucy. What uh, is your favorite season? Spring. Spring? Cause spring, because everything starts to come alive again. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Okay. Well, that was it. That was the rapid fire question round. That wasn't so bad, right? Did I pass? You got it. Well, you got them all. We didn't even have to pass on one of them. So um, one little, I guess, extra bit of trivia I'll add for the benefit of listeners. At mm -hmm. the end of last season of the 40 Re podcast, I conducted a survey and I mentioned mm -hmm. the results to you. I asked people who they'd most like to hear on the show this season and your name came up. Did that surprise you? It shocked me. Really? It really did. It was like, oh, somebody does like me out there. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's fair enough. Let's talk a bit about the uh, paid membership program here, because I understand for someone to become a member, th there is a fee for that, correct? There and is. That fee must go to support programs here? It does help to support programs like the fishing derby and the trees and stuff. Oh. And um, so, yeah, it's only $25 a year for oh, really? a membership for a family. Okay. Wow. And that has not changed since the beginning of time. Okay. And it's 15 for a single. Mm -hmm. And um, to do the wood carving in the basement, you have to be a member, but okay. then it's free. Okay. For anybody who wants to learn to wood carve, they'll teach them. Nice. Okay. Yeah. And I guess just lastly, I'll ask you um, uh, if you could maybe tell me a little more about some of those regular programs. There's wood carving, but I understand you also host darts tournaments as yes, well. Is we that also for darts. members? Darts. Yeah. That's okay. also for members. You have to be a member to play the darts downstairs. Okay. Fair enough. Um, do I mention that we have a fall fair every year? You sure can, yeah. Okay. Tell us about your fall fair. Our fall fair is mostly dedicated to the kids. We do have uh, vendors, and then we have food for sale. and But everything for the children is free. Nice. So we have the wood carvers teaching them how to, well, basically sand. Sure, <laughs> We don't sure. want to give them a knife. <laughs> okay. No, that could be dangerous. Right, right. <clears throat> and then we, t we do bird houses for them so they can paint them, and then they can take them and hang them out, and we give out bird seed, and we have... A lot of little things for the kids to do. There's right. the bouncy house. There's, I can't even name all of them. There's <laughs> contests. There's uh, scavenger hunts. And all of this is free for the kids. We have pony rides. Like, nice, nice. Well, yeah. that's something to look forward to this fall. And hey, for those of you listening, please make sure to check out the show notes below the episode so you can keep up to date on what the Fort Erie Conservation Club is doing. Connie, mm -hmm. thank you so much for spending some time with me. You're very welcome. This was easier than I thought. <laughs> <laughs> All right, welcome back, Fort Erie. Are you ready to learn something? <laughs> I sure hope so, because it's time for... This Month in Fort Erie History, presented by HalfPennyDreadfuls.com. 
The roof of the Peace Bridge Arena came crashing down at 9.30 a.m. on March 17, 1936, due to heavy snow buildup from a freak St. Patrick's Day storm. Thankfully, no one was seriously injured. The afternoon of the disaster, members of the Buffalo Skating Club held a special meeting as their annual carnival had been slated to be held on March the 21st. 10,000 tickets had been sold for the carnival and a who's who of North American skaters was expected to show. If the collapse had happened just four days later during that carnival, thousands of people may have perished in the disaster. And once more, welcome back. Now, this is the part of the episode where I usually review community events. Unfortunately, last week, most of the events I reviewed were canceled due to, you know, the risk of spreading coronavirus. So for that reason, I'm not, I'm not going to be covering community uh, upcoming events this episode at all. And um, look, I get precautions are totally necessary, um, but this can be very, very hard on local businesses too. Without foot traffic, a lot of local businesses suffer, which means local families suffer. So I got to thinking with this pandemic going on, is there some kind of way that a small local Fort Erie business could leverage the power of the internet and social media to either keep their doors open or at the very least, uh, keep in constant contact with their clients. So to conclude this episode, I asked Fort Erie-based social media marketing superstar Andrea Jones to share a few thoughts on how local businesses might be proactive online. And please feel free to share this, this sort of tidbit with other uh, with, with small business owners you may know in the area. Now, a lot of you already know, Andrea is my wife. So strangely, she was available when I asked uh, <laughs> if she might chime in for this episode. But to be clear, she's also responsible for the digital marketing efforts of dozens of international brands. Uh, she's the founder of the Savvy Social School, social media for podcasts. She's the host of the Savvy Social podcast, and she speaks at dozens of conferences and events in both Canada and the United States about how small businesses can use use the power of the internet to reach their target customers. So she'll be concluding today's episode. Be sure to check the uh, show notes below this episode for links, all the places you can connect with Andrea online, and be sure to join me next Tuesday for a chat with Sarah Morin, owner of Fort Erie's Fantastic Gymnastics, as well as Noel LaBeouf, who will have an update for us regarding Fort Erie Pride coming up this June. So long, everybody. Until next week. With so many closures and cancellations at the moment, small business owners in Fort Erie can really leverage the power of social media and the power of the internet to do business. I mean, I'm locally here as well, checking in to see which businesses are updated and are open and if any hours change and all of that good stuff. So if you're a local business, keep us updated. Uh, don't be afraid to post more than once as well. Um, just don't assume everyone saw the post the first time. Keep posting. Um, and if you don't have a page or if you're not on Instagram or if you're not on social media, there are community groups here in Fort Erie that you can use to post. So uh, if you're on Facebook, for instance, you can just search for the term Fort Erie and see what groups pop up and you can use that as a way to communicate with the people in our area. There are some creative things that I've seen small business owners doing, doing during this uh, pandemic. Uh, one of them is a yoga studio is posting some videos online to help their members still stay active during this weird time that we're in. My advice for small business owners in Fort Erie who up until now maybe haven't given much thought to their online strategy is to start now. If you thought that, you know, maybe you should try Instagram or you want to try some Facebook ads, just start learning and testing. This is a great time to put yourself out there because we're all at home looking for you. And even some of our local businesses who have online options. You can shop online, you can order online, whether that be a local fashion boutique or a food delivery service. Um, still continue to support our local economy because we need it even in times like these. You've been listening to the Fort Erie Podcast with your host, Brent Jones, a sales representative with Remax Niagara Realty Limited Brokerage. Follow at Buy with Brent on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram for updates. Subscribe to the Fort Erie Podcast on popular platforms like Apple Podcasts and Spotify and catch a new bite-sized episode every week. Until next time.